Hi, and thank you for watching another video. I hope you are having a wonderful, blessed day. I thought I would do a quick update regarding events occurring around us in the world and how some of what is happening would seem to be linked together and also having us focus on the days in the weeks before us with a very interesting date pointed out by our enemy. I will get to this at the end of this video. In the past week there was a severe flare-up of violence between Israel and Hamas, with the Palestinians caught in the middle, it would seem. Egypt brokered a ceasefire between Israel and Hamas, and what is really interesting is the fact that Israel accepted the ceasefire in the wake of almost 500 rockets and mortars that were fired by Hamas into Israel. Israel's quick agreement to the ceasefire deal made me wonder what was going on behind the scenes, because it does not seem to make a lot of sense, especially given that supplies are still being allowed into Gaza by Israel as if nothing happened, sort of supplying your enemy with what they need to attack you again. This led to the resignation of Lieberman, Israel's Minister of Defense, who said that Netanyahu's decision to accept the ceasefire deal and this decision not being put to a vote, was a surrender to terrorism. Netanyahu later defended his decision by saying that leadership is sometimes to be criticized, when you know secret and sensitive things that you cannot share with the citizens of Israel. It makes one wonder what secret things Netanyahu knows, and was referring to that has to do with Israel's security and why he continues to supply Hamas with fuel and money while he is saying this. Would this in some way be linked to preparing the Middle East for Trump's deal of the century that has not been mentioned much in the news recently? From a biblical perspective, the announcement of the peace plan would seem to point to a very important moment in time, where if Israel agrees to a deal in which they give away more of God's land, will represent a third strike against them, and from the information that has surfaced so far, it may very well be more than 50% of what currently represents Israel, not to mention that Jerusalem may also be divided into two. In this article, we see that Greenblatt provided some information on Trump's plan, and that this includes uniting Gaza and the West Bank. This may sound like a harmless plan, but if we take a map of Israel and consider this technically, how do you go about uniting Gaza and the West Bank without splitting Israel into two sections that are completely separate from each other? How would one solve such a problem? The only way would be to give the entire northern section, or the entire southern section, to those to whom God says it will never belong. And I will give unto thee and to thy seed after thee the land wherein thou art a stranger, all the land of Canaan, for an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. Just today I came across another article in which Greenblatt apparently told British private funders of the Israeli military that they should withhold their criticism until they have seen the plan which is expected to be made public on or around December 1st. This is the first time a specific date has been hinted at for the announcement of the peace plan, and it is interesting that Trump would want to wait until the start of Hanukkah, or the Feast of Dedication, to announce his plan. Jared Kushner had the following to say about the timing of the release of this plan a few months ago. We have the plan ready, mostly ready, and when the time is right, we'll bring it out. I have a feeling that this is what those who are working behind the scenes to bring the Antichrist onto the world stage, and who are planning to get Israel to break God's everlasting covenant with Abraham, have been waiting for, to release the peace plan, as the time will be right when the Feast of Dedication arrives. This would also fit in with the description of the false messiah who would seek to change times and laws and to keep feasts that are not instructed by God in his word to be kept. And he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws. And they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and the dividing of time. If Israel agrees to such a deal, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob will certainly intervene to ensure that his promise to Abraham is not broken, 
and this is where Jacob's trouble will start, since they would have acted in the same way as Esau, who sold his birthright for a bowl of soup. What is even worse is that Israel will be making a deal with death, should they agree to give God's land away to those who only want to see Israel's destruction. Giving away God's land in exchange for peace with the enemy has never worked in the past for Israel, and neither will it work in the future. The word shows us that Israel will agree to break God's everlasting covenant with Abraham on his behalf, and to enter into a covenant with death. The earth also is defiled under the inhabitants thereof, because they have transgressed the laws, changed the ordinance, broken the everlasting covenant. Therefore hath the curse devoured the earth, and they that dwell therein are desolate. Therefore the inhabitants of the earth are burned, and few men left. Because ye have said, We have made a covenant with death, and with hell are we at agreement, when the overflowing scourge shall pass through, it shall not come unto us. For we have made lies our refuge, and under falsehood have we hid ourselves. And your covenant with death shall be disannulled, and your agreement with hell shall not stand. When the overflowing scourge shall pass through, then ye shall be trodden down by it. Can you see how what is described in these passages are linked to 1 Thessalonians 5, where the following is written? For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. The overflowing scourge, mentioned in Isaiah 28 verse 18, is clearly connected to the sudden destruction that is mentioned in 1 Thessalonians 5, and the agreement with hell will be encapsulated in their saying of peace and security. There are other events that will further bring about tension in the world, and another instance would be the Brexit deal that will be signed on November the 25th. As you probably know by now, I look for patterns and clues regarding the end times, because I am excited about the return of our Savior. Even if fellow brothers and sisters in Christ do not like the fact that I am watching for the bridegroom's return, there is nothing that will take away my expectation. Even though we often see patterns that seem to be pointing to certain events or prophecies written about in the Word of God possibly being fulfilled and giving us hope as we continue to watch, we usually encounter some disappointment along the way. But that is simply to be expected when we do what Jesus told us in Luke 12, verse 37. Blessed are those servants whom the Lord when he cometh shall find watching. Verily I say unto you, that he shall gird himself, and make them to sit down to meet, and will come forth and serve them. Jesus never gave us the date of his return, and by instructing those who belong to him to watch, he knew that they would encounter disappointment along the way, and in many situations face the scorn of their fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. But I believe it is ultimately a test of a believer's heart. Where does your desire lie? Is it your heart's desire, above all else, to be with our Savior? And do you find the world and all it has to offer absolutely worthless and rejectable? Or do you get annoyed when others get excited about looking for the return of Jesus? And would you maybe prefer it if Jesus only returned at a later point in time because of the items on your agenda in this world? Just something to think about. You may have seen the video I Pet Go 2 on YouTube, which would basically seem to describe a second 9-11 event which those who are under the enemy's control apparently took five years to put together, and in which they present their plan to bring in the Antichrist, and they have hidden this plan in plain sight through this animation. I have seen many analyses of this video by other YouTubers, but one thing I have not seen before is people pointing out the date that this video clearly pronounces at the end. Now this may be nothing, and it may even be for some other year in the future, but given the information that we have now heard regarding the announcement of the peace plan, and how this is positioned at the start of Hanukkah, 
I thought it would be of interest to share this bit of information with you now, given that this date will soon be with us, and for those who are watching for the return of Jesus, it may be of value, even if it is just to encourage you to keep expecting our Lord to come for us soon. What I would like to focus on is the final minute of this video, where an Antichrist figure is brought out into the open, in an Anubis boat, and then stares into the sun. The symbolism that is used here points in my opinion to the mystery Egyptian and Babylonian religions of sun worship and Freemasonry, that are instrumental in bringing the Antichrist onto the scene. We see the pyramids to the left that are then destroyed, also pointing to the destruction of the religions that brought the Antichrist onto the scene, in exchange for worship of the Antichrist that will become the religion of the world as part of the beast system during the tribulation. If we position this scene on a world map, it would seem that the boat would be positioned close to the shores of Israel, with the pyramids positioning Egypt to the left, and the Antichrist then looking at the sun as it is setting. This, in my opinion, could also be pointing to the closure of the dispensation that we currently find ourselves in. What we also see is a section of the constellation Scorpio that is protruding from the horizon to the left of the sun. If we then go to Stellarium and search for this specific configuration, where the sun is going down with the constellation Scorpio just to the left, and dipping slightly below the horizon, we find a match for this year pointing to December 9th or 10th, which is quite interesting as this date also marks a very important date on Israel's calendar. When we consider TorahCalendar.com we discover that this time that is pointed out in this video lines up with the last days of Hanukkah or the Feast of Dedication, often referred to as the Second Feast of Tabernacles and this then being the second last great day. And this is the Father's will which hath sent me, that of all which he hath given me I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that every one which seeth the Son, and believeth on him, may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. He that rejecteth me, and receiveth not my words, hath one that judgeth him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. Now we do not know yet whether this date applies to 2018 or some other year in the future, and whether it marks the start or the completion of the process with which the Antichrist will be brought onto the scene. At this point it is just an interesting date to keep in mind, and to be watchful for. Remember that the Antichrist is only revealed to the world once he removes three of ten kings that will come before him. And the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings that shall arise, and another shall rise after them, and he shall be diverse from the first, and he shall subdue three kings. If this date represents the completion of bringing the Antichrist onto the world scene, then we have to allow for some time to pass before this point during which specific events that have been prophesied in the Bible will have to occur first. Could the reason that we have not heard anything about Trump's deal of the century have to do with the date that is portrayed in this animation? Could this date point to the start of the storm that Trump referred to on two occasions in 2017? Have you accepted the Lord Jesus as your Savior, and are you ready to meet Him? We could be out of here in a short amount of time, and even well before December the 10th, if this date marks the end of the chaos that will come before the phoenix rises out of the ashes. If not, then I will continue to look for clues and share them with you as I find them. One of these days we will be out of here, and what a glorious day that will be. Have you ever given it some serious thought? Do you know that the Bible tells us that we are unable to imagine what our Heavenly Father prepared for those who love Him, and given that it took only six days to create the universe and everything in it, imagine what Jesus could do with two thousand years. I find these passages so intriguing and that is part of why I have such a desire to be with the Lord. I cannot wait to see what He prepared for us 
and to fall before his feet and worship him as my Lord and my God. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. For since the beginning of the world, men have not heard, nor perceived by the ear, neither hath the eye seen, O God, beside thee, what he hath prepared for them that waiteth for him. If you have not yet accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, there is no better day than today to do so. The Bible tells us the following, That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. If you have not done this yet, you can do this right now and become a child of God, who is born of God's Spirit. Jesus paid the price for your sins on the cross and is giving you the opportunity to become a child of God as a free gift to you. All that you have to do is to realize that you are a sinner in need of a Savior. Confess your sinfulness to the Lord and understand that only the blood of Jesus can cleanse you of your sins. And He has already done it for you. All that you have to do is to accept this wonderful gift through faith and to thank Him for His love towards you. Then you can look forward with excitement to meeting our Redeemer in the air very soon. May our Heavenly Father bless you and keep you, and may He make His face shine upon you, and may He give you peace that transcends all understanding. Until next time, or until we meet our Savior and each other in the air, God bless.